Hi everybody, my name is Joshua and welcome to Northern Solar. At the beginning of April in 2022, we got a set of solar panels installed on our roof here in Cheshire. We have an east-west pitching roof here at our house, so we have 10 panels on the back of the house, which is the east, and 10 panels on the front, which is the west. That gives us a nice even spread across the day. So in total, we have 20 panels. Each panel is a 400 watt panel, giving us a total of eight kilowatts. Those panels feed into a SolarEdge SE6000 inverter, which goes directly into our house and, and any excess at the moment goes into the grid. We did order a battery system to be installed at the same time, but because of shipping delays, we had to wait till the end of April to get that fitted. So our first month at the moment is just solar only with no battery storage. So let's have a quick look at the figures and see how we've done in terms of production this month. So here's the graph which shows our daily production across the month of April. And here you can see we've had quite a few days which have been above 30 kilowatt hours for the day, which is pretty incredible really. I think 14 days in total we were above 30. Most of the rest of the month we were around 15 to 25. And then there's a couple of really cloudy days where we were a bit lower down the scale um, under 10. Well, that day was pretty horrendous, the 4th of April. I think we were around five kilowatt hours for that day. Some really heavy, heavy cloud that day. So what this shows to me is that obviously, as everyone knows, solar is massively dependent on the weather. These days where we've got above 30 kilowatt hours doesn't mean it's been completely sunny all day. We'll still have patches of cloud, maybe on this uh, 46th day or whatever this day was here, we might have seen very, very little cloud, but certainly on even on days with 30, 25 to 30 kilowatt hours in a day, there's still days where there's quite a bit of cloud around, but you'd be surprised just how quickly you generate electricity when the sun is out. So obviously it's not all about just what you produce, it's obviously about what you consume. 40 kilowatt hours is a crazy amount of electricity to produce in one day, and especially if you're not going to be able to use it all, most households wouldn't be using anywhere like 40 kilowatt hours in a day. So you're gonna be exporting a lot of that back to the grid, or ideally trying to store it either in an electric car or a home battery. So let's look at the next graph where it'll show how we've used our electricity and what it's cost us over the month. So here you can see a few tables and charts which give us a breakdown of what we've um, produced and consumed across the, the month of April. So starting with the production, our solar panels produced 812 kilowatt hours in the month of April, which was way beyond what I was expecting. And maybe we had quite a good April in terms of hours of sunshine, but I was really, really impressed with how much we produced. According to our meters in the house and the apps and stuff, it says we exported 605 kilowatt hours of that back to the grid. And we only managed to use 207 kilowatt hours, which to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed about because that means roughly 25% of our electricity we've managed to use and we've given 75% back to the grid. And as you can see, we had to consume 185 kilowatt hours from the grid. So that's the sort of times of the day where it's in the morning before the sun comes up and you're using electricity, or in the evening when the sun's gone down and you're using electricity again for heating, cooking, lighting, all that sort of stuff. So if you add together what we consumed from our solar panels and what we consumed from the grid, that was a total household consumption of 392 kilowatt hours. And as you can see further down here, 52.8% of that was electricity that we generated ourselves, but 47.2% of that was consumed from the grid. So when we look over at the financials, I want to compare this first month we've had our panels, April, to what it would have cost us with no solar panels. So our standing charge is around 47 pence per day, which worked out at 14 pounds 30 for the month of April. Obviously that doesn't make it difference if you've got solar panels or not, you have to pay that. Without the solar panels installed, our usage of 392 kilowatt hours would have cost 103 pounds 52 pence, giving us a total monthly electric cost for April of 117 pounds and 82 pence. Because we had the solar panels, our grid usage was only 37 pounds and two pence, meaning our total electric cost for the month was 51 pounds and 32 pence. But this is where the export to grid comes in. We've signed up with our energy provider to sell our electricity back to the grid at a measly 5.75 pence per unit. But when you calculate the amount we exported to the grid, that worked out at 34 pounds and 79 pence of earnings. So our total bill really for the month of April with our solar panels works out at 16 pounds and 53 pence compared to what it would have been without solar panels of 117 pounds 82 pence, which gives us a monthly saving of 101 pounds 29 pence. So obviously 101 pounds 29 pence saved on electricity in one month sounds fantastic, 
but obviously solar panels aren't free and it's going to take us quite a few years to pay back our initial investment on the panels. It's been really interesting to see just how much electricity we can produce from our solar panels. Even on a cloudy day, we're producing way more than we use in the house. We also have a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, which takes up a lot of our electricity usage. Previously, we would charge that overnight during our off-peak times to save money. But now, as we're producing free electricity during the day, we can charge our car rather than export to the grid. So the next big thing for us is we've just had our home battery installed. Ideally, we'd have liked it all installed at the same time. But due to a shipping delay, we had to wait till the end of April to have it installed. So these figures from the month of April can give us a really good understanding of what we can produce, but our usage patterns and how much we can save overall, rather than export into the grid, will be interesting to see over the next month. I hope this information has been useful. If you've got any questions, just pop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. For anyone just starting out on their solar experience, um, feel free to ask questions. I can give some of my experiences through uh, research and planning and buying and stuff that we went through. For anyone who's been doing it a lot longer than us, please feel free to give us some advice. We're still very new to this. Uh, really looking forward to getting the batteries installed and seeing how that all works out. But that'll do for now. We'll check in next month and see how we've got on through May. Cheers.